rather dull, but I mean, it does. And, you know, we can do it in this country, but the fact is different countries have different financial services regimes, and you can't just make something available to somebody around the world because we'd have to understand what... If you target the United States and we don't know what their... You know, what their you'd have to then get advice as to what their system is. So, unfortunately, although the internet is, in, is incredibly enabling and on balance it's just fantastic, the fact is it doesn't exist in a vacuum. It does... It exists with legal, very established legal constraints around the globe, and they will act as an inertia for certain kinds of things. And people who have got the skill or the knowledge to be able to navigate themselves through that complexity, yeah. surely they're the people who, in the future, are going to be absolutely key when it comes to when it comes to promoting future. Finance. It absolutely. is, but I mean, that's also. I think um, I actually didn't want this panel <coughs> just to be about marketing because. It could be about viral marketing for traditional cinema because it's just it's the same issue. Um, I think probably the best one of the best marketing campaigns on the internet for me anyway in traditional cin cinema was Kid Adulthood, where it was very clever and they had competitions and kids put stickers saying Kid Adulthood all over London and took photos of themselves on mobile phones and won T-shirts if they they mailed them back. So something all over London there were these stickers everywhere saying kid out hoods and written by kids and you know so there, there have been some fantastic ideas but not necessarily with little niche films so and, and, and some films I mean I've just produced a film that's very niche and we may have to go to self-distribution but for other reasons I haven't got a huge marketing hook so not every film has the brand or the thing you can go and market and you, you have to build up through it uh, I, I've got a very dark drama that may win Berlin or Toronto, but I've got nothing to turn into a key ring or turn into a game. Or I've got no, but I really haven't. <laughs> and so, you know, so I'm at odds with the marketing on it. It doesn't always go hand in hand. Because that's the problem I come across or come up against quite often is that when we're marketing solo films, so there's a lot of the times when I put together these marketing campaigns, and that's what my job is. I'm the person that was brought in with soda that's supposed to know all this stuff that keeps aware of these sites, keeps aware of all these viral trends and, and what's going on. But with a lot of these films, like we did a um, documentary called Integrate Silence, which was actually one of our biggest films of last year, which um, I don't know how many people have heard, but it's a three hour almost silent documentary about Carthusian monks. And <laughs> it just would have died online, but there's no look for it, there's no place for it there. But because we did this speech, I think the thing with online is that it is about finding those communities, and it might work for films like Kid or Hood, it might work for certain mm. films, but certainly doesn't work for all films, because a lot of the audiences aren't necessarily online. I know it's just completely talking on the subject, but I think the whole point of online, and as you were saying about getting information out six months beforehand, is cultivating those communities wherever they are. And if it fits the film, then great, do it on the line. I think we're going to find increasingly over the years that it's going to fit a heck of a lot more films than we believe it will, as the audience grows up with online and perhaps marketing, but as you say, it doesn't necessarily suit the film, it might suit kid or hood, it might suit um, snakes on a plane, but it certainly mm. doesn't suit a heck of a lot of other films. That's interesting to say, though. I, I would think, surely the internet <coughs> is sufficiently rich and varied, and already, uh, I can't, you know, there's almost no film that can't be with the correct sort of targeting, the correct, the right amount of imagination and creativity and a little bit of money, there's almost no film that couldn't be promoted on the internet. If you can't promote Something yeah, but, the the, internet, where the hell can you but there are degrees. I mean, there, there are, you know, it's like there's somebody in Brighton I know who's just done a film about boy racers. Great for the internet, not great for traditional, but you know, can't, you, you can just see that. And you it can, depends on where you put your budget, because I'll still do a lot of that. I'll still put a lot of my budget behind. Uh, for me, online, it's like great if we can get a lot of budget. I'd love to do everything for every single feature we do, but you've got to know where, when you're working with a small budget, you've got to know where the target audience is going to be looking. And for us, they were looking at the local press, they were looking at Catholic press, they were looking at regional papers. And so when you've got a small budget, you're distributing it to cinema online, you can't just say, right, great, we'll do something bigger. It's a case of finding those films where it's really going to maximise that audience potential. And I think for a lot of the films, it's not working online. But as you say, exactly, every film you can do something. Mm -hmm. But it's not necessarily going to be your best venture on a small budget because these companies do charge a lot like green room new media maze and all these places that do specialize in a specific film online advertisement but and it is interesting that it's those kind of kind of world cinema or dark dramas or whatever you want to call them um they the reason a lot of them would be theatrically released wasn't to make any money and everybody knew there'd be a loss was that the minute it opened even for two days it would be reviewed in the Sunday Times culture, it would then get all of the people in Hampstead who love world cinema going to, going to the picture houses, and it's, it was this whole sort of network, which is quite interesting about if you use theatrical for those kind of films, because for them, that was the best thing they could ever do, was get critically reviewed and in that think, art house. 
So I don't think you need a big advertising budget to go online at all. I mean, you've got communities there that are free, and if they're passionate about your film or your subject matter, if you can identify those niche audiences and get them on board, give them something back for being interested in your own film, they want to spread the word themselves, and more people come in, and Son of Man's got no advertising budget whatsoever at the moment. We're applying for funding. We're trying to get sponsors on board that are associated with the film in one way or another. But it's the communities, the grassroots, that we're working to help support our film. And they're using their websites, which reach out to their congregations or to their communities. And in terms of, you were mentioning earlier, six months ahead advertising or 12 months, we're not releasing in the States for another 12 months. But yet we're already marketing it to those online communities in the States. They're already requesting screenings. And we've already got church bodies on board in the States. So in that sense, we're marketing at least 12 months ahead through the internet. And in the UK, we're just building those communities more and more ready for our release at Easter. So I think, you know, just through time, spending a bit of time and talking to these people and giving them something back for wanting to be involved in your film, and they, they will support your film. And free advertising is the best advertising. And then you have, <laughs> you know, you have newspapers and other people that see this buzz and will want to make a story on your film, and it's all free. Alex? I think that if people get a bit um, hung up on this whole idea of um, self-distribution, I think it's a slight misnomer as much as that what you're talking about is filmmakers realising they should be further down the value chain, and that they can partner up with people with expertise in marketing and distribution or utilise their own knowledge, mm -hmm. and get to a point where there's a chance they can capture more of the revenues that are out there. To me, the bigger question is, what will the revenues be that are out there? Because I've heard the, I've heard the word free mentioned countless times in the panel. You're talking as a filmmaker or as a sales agent? I'm talking Ooh. both hats off. Yeah. Both Alex hats, is a sales agent. Off, off. Yeah. Um, but the, I think the, the, the problem is that the, the people are expecting those, expecting the content to be free. There's an expectation a lot of the time for content to be free now. So to, to me, with a filmmaker hat on, that's more of a worry. And the sort of distribution or people marketing expertise. I don't think I answer word free. <laughs> I mean, you're right. You're right. I mean, but the music industry went went through it as well. I mean, they, you know, I mean, Napster arrived and suddenly people were file sharing and <coughs> expecting you could get music for free, and you could get music for free. And it was, you know, it was it was catastrophic for a for a time. But then, fundamentally, people don't like. Fundamentally, people don't like doing things that are illegal. I mean, if you so eventually they get to the point where would you pay seventy-five pence for a, a single download? Probably you would, and you do, and they do. So people now are getting into are used to that. You know, they, they've got all the accessibility of the internet, all that uh, which is which, the best of the internet. But they will pay, and they will pay an, an amount. Though it's a price point, but they will pay. So I think you know, I don't think it is all about it's free or nothing. I think there is a market there. But it's about educating, you know, the consumer. I think it's an interesting thing at the uh, Digital Horizons um, uh, day that Miranda was involved with last week, where they're talking about the fact that there was a panel that interviewed a load of kids about how much they would pay for music, and they were talking about it and saying they would basically they wouldn't pay for music, but they would when they were asked, well, what would you pay for a family ringtone? They're like, yeah, three dollars. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I mean, there, there, is, there is an expectation already amongst people that they. They do expect visual content to be free because it's already being, not, not necessarily legally, but it's already <coughs> out there for free to an extent. So for me, again, with a filmmaker hat on, the question for me is how do you finance these things up front? Financing a piece of music is relatively low cost. You know, you can just go and sit in your, in your um, home studio with five grand worth of equipment and knock out some tunes, use the same techniques of marketing as these guys have successfully used. Making a film is a lot more expensive, which I, I don't know. I'm not saying I don't have to square the circle, mm -hmm. but that's more of a worry to me. You know, um, I think there, there are great talents in terms of marketing films online, and I think it's a great opportunity. But I'm more worried about how I get to the point of having something to distribute. But Alex, what about as a producer when you're told? Uh, take the normal DVD sale model where the DVD was £15 and as a producer, just like an album, the sales agent would get £11, the guy who actually packaged and posted it would get 2 and the producer would get 2 If I could put it on my website and sell it direct, I'm looking at getting 11 So immediately for me, I'm thinking of positive figures as opposed to you're thinking negative, it's all free. I'm that's I'm a really conflict. I hope it works that way. 
I mean, I, I really mm. had a resurgence in cinema. I really hope that, that people will, will invest in more, probably smaller venues mm. with, a, with a greater diversity of films being shown. Because, again, I don't see the threat as being other films in cinemas doing so. I see the threat as being um, uh, the fact that you can go and watch the Grand Prix in the cinema now, because that's squeezing independent cinema out even further for, for the margin. So. Mm. Tracy, can you just talk about your revenue to date on? Well, I mean, it's, it's very early days, and we're only been distributed in the UK, um, mm. and we're being launched in the States in March, and I guess France 